Very good afternoon to one and all. Let us continue with our study of the book of Jonah. And our text for this afternoon is taken from Jonah chapter 3, verses 5 to 10. Jonah chapter 3, verses 5 to 10. And I shall read it for you. Jonah chapter 3, verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, that they turned from the evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord of our life, O Father, keep us from the snare of riches and the vain honors and pleasures of this life. Show us so clearly the things of lasting worth, the things of your eternal kingdom, that nothing else will satisfy us. Teach us to think and plan for eternity, for time is but vapor and bubble. Grant us grace always to pursue true holiness and godliness through Christ our Lord. Amen. What is one saint in the Old Testament and one from the New Testament who failed when first called to do a work for God but who has given a second opportunity? You may think of Moses. One day, while tending the flocks of sheep and goats that he was over. Moses saw a bush that burned, but was not consumed. And he knew that something unique was happening. From that burning bush, God spoke to Moses and told him to take the shoes off his feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Exodus chapter 3 verse 5. And he had respect for God. He feared God. God also said to Moses, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Exodus chapter 3 verse 10. It took God 40 years in the desert to undo the 40 years of being in Egypt. When God was ready, he began to take the next step with Moses, and this was the next step. However, Moses did not feel that he was worthy. He had doubts about himself. He doubted his speaking ability. He had questions for God. Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. But God did not give up. On Moses. He gave Moses a second chance and met Moses' objections in such a way that caused Moses to obey God's will based on his sovereignty. As for the New Testament saint, you may think of Peter. After Peter had denied Christ even with oaths and cursings, he was spiritually on his back quite helpless. But the resurrected Christ came to him when he was in this condition and he restored him. He got him up on his feet and going again. Jesus restored Peter. Jesus restored Peter. What exactly happened? 
In John chapter 21, verses 15 to 17, the Lord gave Peter a second chance and asked Peter three times whether he loved him. And Peter said, Thou knowest that I love thee. Christ had confronted Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? He asked that question three times and Peter said, You know I love you. And Christ said, Feed my sheep. Jonah is another person to whom God gave a second opportunity after failure. As a result, Jonah chapter 3 verse 4 says that Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Jonah preached as he walked into town. We don't know a lot about Jonah's message. Undoubtedly, he told the people about God, for they believed God as a result of his message. Verse 5. Jonah may have even shared his personal story of how God kept him alive so he could bring them God's important message. By the way, believers' stories about second chances are also powerful in convincing others to follow God. Why are believers' stories about second chances powerful in convincing others to follow God? The testimony illustrates God's discipline on the disobedient person and His grace that enables the person to become useful again. It seems that Jonah repeated God's message over and over as he walked into town. Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Roman numeral one. The people's repentance. The people's repentance. The people of Nineveh believed Jonah's message. They wept at his words and believed in God. Jonah chapter 3 verses 5 to 9 reads, So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth for the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way, and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent, and turn away from his fierce anger, that we perished not? What happened as a result of God giving Jonah a second opportunity to obey him? The people of Nineveh believed God. The king of Nineveh proclaimed a decree for all people to cry out mightily to God. But, as we will learn next week, Jonah was not happy with Nineveh's repentance. Nevertheless, I'm sure that he reflected later in his life on the blessing of seeing such a large number of people believe in God. The fact that he wrote the book of Jonah shows that he was eventually glad God had used him in such a tremendous way. The people's faith was placed not in Jonah, but in Jonah's God. This is the mark of true revival and should be the goal of every true witness, missionary, preacher, or Bible teacher. The people also proclaimed a fast. Not only was their faith immediate, but so was the outworking of that faith. Their outward actions showed their inward change. The people then put on sackcloth, 
Sackcloth was a rough garment that was worn as a sign of sorrow and humility. The people of Nineveh were genuinely sorry for their sinful ways, and they then humbled themselves before God. This revival touched people in all walks of life. Even the king humbled himself before God, verse 6. In fact, he took the lead. He made an official proclamation decreeing a city-wide fast. The decree called on the people to fast, wear sackcloth, cry out to God, and turn from their evil ways, verses 7 to 9. The people acknowledge their possessions, that is, animals, were at the service of God. Giving God our hearts affects all areas of life. Billy Sunday once said, When a person is converted, even his cat will know it. I wonder about the cockroaches though. Roman numeral 2. God's mercy. God's mercy. This is in Jonah chapter 3, verse 10. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Verse 10 is a difficult verse. Immediately, three questions come to mind. First, does God ever need to repent? Second, can God do any evil? Third, does not God always keep his word? This is a problem, especially in light of Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, which says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? In other words, the verse says that God can neither lie nor repent. It says also that God keeps his word. Letter A. The first question. The first question. Does God ever need to repent? God took note of the change in Nineveh. So he brought about a different result. Instead of judgment, he showed mercy. That is what God repented means. God acted differently because the people had changed. He did not repent in the sense of being sorry for having done something sinful. Letter B. The second question. The second question. Can God do any evil? There are two meanings of evil in verse 10. When he talks of the people of Nineveh turning from the evil way, it is speaking of moral evil, such as murder, bloodshed, adultery. In the second part of the verse, evil is referring to calamity. We speak of a thunderstorm as being a quote-unquote bad storm. But a storm cannot sin. We simply mean it was a destructive storm. God said he was going to destroy Nineveh. That is the evil the second part of the verse is speaking of. God would still have been perfectly holy even if he had brought calamity on the city. Let us see. The third question. The third question, does not God always keep his word? We must remember that this threatened doom was conditional, not absolute. It was conditioned on the continued wickedness of the people. If they had gone on as they were, judgment would have fallen. But since they forsook their evil ways, they were no longer under the threat of judgment. God was consistent. He always judges sin. And He always shows mercy to those who repent. 
the people's repentance and God's mercy. All of this happened because of Roman numeral 3, God's second opportunity. God's second opportunity. God gave Jonah a second chance to obey by going to Nineveh. Jonah went and preached. One of the greatest revivals in history broke out. This is letter A, a biblical example of second chance. A biblical example of God's second chance. But we also have letter B, a present day testimony of God's second chance. A present day testimony of God's second chance. Now, a verse that is dear to me, I'd like to share it with you this afternoon. The Apostle Paul's second epistle to Timothy, chapter 2. Turn to Paul's second epistle to Timothy, chapter 2. And I want to give this to you because it has been so important in my life. I'll never forget this verse. Paul's second epistle to Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. This is my testimony. What the Spirit of God has done in my life. Why I gave up, forsook the senior lecturer position in Republic Polytechnic for this reason. 2 Timothy 2.15 Paul said to Timothy, Study to show yourself approved, to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In 1986, a Christian classmate shared with me the gospel, and I trusted in Christ. My life after believing in Christ had not been an easy one. It could even be said to be a roller coaster ride. I was zealous for the Lord, and I wanted to enroll in Bible college after my O levels. But I forgot to remind myself to be wary of the dangers that lay in the life ahead of me. Following Christ is like running a race. Know we not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. It is like a marathon. One has to pace himself. On hindsight, I may have run too quickly during the initial stages of the race. I sprinted, and that may have accounted for my backsliding during my national service years. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15a But I behaved as if I was walking after the flesh. I felt so ashamed when my platoon mate asked me why, as a Christian, I was uttering vulgarities. My national service lasted until the early 1990s. I returned to God at that time, but it was only for a while. I had to choose which course to take up at the university. I was particularly attracted to the discipline of philosophy, and I decided to study it. Know thyself, know thy enemy, and every war you fight shall be your victory, was the reason given. To know the enemies of God, I had to quote-unquote infiltrate and learn more about them, somewhat reminiscent of the new evangelical teaching or infiltration. But it was only an excuse. Moreover, to paraphrase what a pastor once said, while theology is like throwing darts and hitting the target, philosophy is like throwing darts and missing the target. It was also during the 1990s that I committed a grave sin against God and had to bear the consequences of my sin. But I was brought to remembrance how David had confessed his sins after being rebuilt by Nathan 
I did the same thing and felt really at peace. I turned back to God, but it was only for a while. Very soon, probably due to my training in philosophy, I began to think to myself, what is the meaning of life? God does not provide meaning to my life. I need to look for something deeper. Surely there's a deeper meaning to life. Surely there was more to the meaning of life than just God. Thus began a long detour in my life in search for the quote-unquote true meaning of life. In the year 2000, while still in my search for quote-unquote life's true meaning, I prayed and asked for a certain favor from God. But my prayer was not answered. I began to be very angry with God. I even cursed and swore at Him. But I forgot that God will answer prayers in His own time, and we had to wait upon Him. I wait for the Lord my soul doth wait, Psalm 130, verse 5a. I feel so ashamed every time I think about what I did. Yet God never did let go of me. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. After a long detour for over five years, I returned to God in 2006. I was like the murmuring generation of Israelites who wandered in the wilderness without reaching the promised land. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Numbers chapter 14, verse 29. But unlike these Israelites, God brought me back to his bosom. In other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. John chapter 10, verse 16a. I am in tears every time I think about how God still remembered me after so many years of wandering. A distressing life event then rocked my life. I never forget that weekday morning in Marina Square shopping mall. I am not promoting the shopping mall, okay? This was where it took place. I was there alone. I say these things do not happen by chance. As I've said earlier, a distressing life event had rocked my life. That morning, I was wandering aimlessly there. The whole shopping mall was practically empty. Everyone was in the office. I had just come up from one of the escalators. And when the reality of the distressing life event I had mentioned earlier on pressed on me, I asked. I asked. On that day in November 2010, I asked the Lord, Why is this happening to me? Is it that you want me to study in Bible college? Is that what you will have me to do? I never forget that day. The Spirit of God affirmed, You give your life to study. Yes. It was God giving me another chance to study in Bible college. After 24 years, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Subsequently, I enrolled in distance learning programs at Andersonville Theological Seminary, a conservative Baptist seminary situated in Camilla, Georgia, USA. And now I am rejoicing always rejoicing, every day rejoicing, because my will is the Lord's will. Charles Spurgeon once said, when your will is God's will, you will have your will.
the people's repentance, God's mercy, and God's second opportunity. God graciously uses believers even after they fail Him. His grace makes a way for us to still be useful to Him after we fail Him. When, if ever, have you miserably failed to do God's will? God's desire to use us is great enough that He doesn't give up on us when we fail Him. Jonah failed miserably when God asked him to do His will. So did I. By God's grace, both Jonah and I were given a second opportunity to do what God would have us to do. May we be challenged not to give up, but to praise God for His gracious second opportunities to do His will. Submit to God today and realize the blessings of obedience. Praise God for His graciousness in giving us second opportunities to obey and serve Him. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God of the second opportunity, draw near to us as we draw near to you. Fill us with your spirit and give us more of your likeness. Fill us with purity and true holiness. We long to be like you as much as is possible for a creature to be like his creator. Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Grant that we may grow not merely in experience, but more in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. In His name we pray. Amen. God bless your week ahead. Stay home and stay safe. Thank you.